Hey crafty friends, Christina here with you from Close to My Heart with the March uh, Mystery Project. Um, each month I do a little project that I send out to everyone who makes a purchase with me as sort of a thank you. And the mystery is you don't know what it's going to be. For March we're going to be creating this fun little tote box. I thought it was kind of fun because we have this new stamp set, uh, the Cosette card making one here. And as you can see, all of these blue images are dies that coordinate. And so we've got this perfect one right here that's going to help us create this tote box. So pretty simple project, but really fun. So we're also going to use the Cosette papers um, along with that Cosette uh, card making stamp set and thin cuts. Um, and that is the pattern paper here behind that. So let's go ahead and get started. Move this a little bit out of the way so that I can show you all the pieces. There's not a lot of pieces that you need for this. Um, so obviously if you're getting this, thank you from me, you'll have all the pieces pre-cut and stamped for you, but if you are wanting to make it at home, um, here are the measurements. So this is our French vanilla. It is four and a half um, wide by six inches tall, and I've gone and scored it at one and a half all the way around, so on each of the four sides. So then what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna make some tabs in these four corners here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut along the score line up to where it meets the next score line. And I'm just gonna cut out this miter here um, a little triangle piece to help make this tab and I'm going to do it on the other side as well. This is just going to, um, this is always helpful when you're doing 3D projects because it makes it less bulky when we go ahead and start um, adhering it together. So I'm just going to repeat that same process where I'm going to go along that score line up to the next score line, cut out a little triangle and it does not matter the size of the triangle. Um, it's just again to get that bulk so that we don't have it when we're folding it and gluing it together. So you're going to do that with all four sides. And if you prefer, you can use your um, trimmer. I am just using my scissors, just quick and easy. And then I'll pick up the little slivers afterwards here. And our final one. And... Okay, so now you can see I've done that with each of the four corners. And then you're just going to go ahead and fold along all of those score lines. So you can kind of see... This is going to take shape. This is going to be the base of that tote. And you could change the dimensions if you wanted to have it be a little taller or maybe you wanted it to be a little shallower. Um, just alter those to fit your needs. And move all these scrap pieces out of the way. Okay. So then you're going to want to take some adhesive. You could use some uh, regular tape adhesive, some stronger adhesive. I'm just going to go ahead and use some of our regular Close My Heart tape runner. Um, adhesive here and I'm putting it on all four of those tabs ahead of time just so that it's easier for me to put it together. So then you're just going to go ahead and fold it inward so the tab is going inside. You're going to meet the edge along that score line of the outside one. Give it a good hold there so they make good contact. Again, making sure that you meet that edge. Just going all the way around until you get your final one done and then you can see you've got your little box that creates that base of your tote. So then you have two pieces. These are the die cuts, again, in that same color in that French vanilla. And what I wanted to do is because uh, the Cosette paper, I feel like has kind of a nice uh, vintage feel to it, is I'm taking our toffee ink and a sponge. You could use a sponge dauber as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sponge around the edges real quick just to kind of bring in that kind of warm vintage feel to it so you can choose to do this or not do it depending on your taste like i said i'm just trying to kind of tie in that feel and then you can also do the sides of the box too because that'll show through just a little bit so i'm just going to go ahead and do that as well and i'm just kind of worried about the front of my box so that's all i'm going to do right now so i'm just doing those three edges because that top edge will be covered by the die cut, all right? So then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use stronger adhesive for this. I'm gonna use some score tape and I'm gonna put it on the long edge of my box here. Because the reason is when we put these two die cuts on and then we're gonna have them pulled together here to close it, there's tension on that and I don't want it to end up coming apart. So I'm gonna do both sides at the same time. Again, just cause it's easier, quicker. All right, so we got that done. And then I'm just gonna take my piercing tool and I'm gonna take that backing off of the score tape. Sometimes 
easier said than done. There we go. Now I got it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take the piece here and I turn it sideways so that I can kind of center that, having it flush against that base because it's not exactly the same width as the die cut. So by centering it, it gives that balance. Okay. And I'm just going to take off the backing to these other, other side here. Up. Okay. So turn it sideways so I can get a better visual here. Because I always feel like if I have things kind of landscaped like this, it makes it just a little bit easier to see and to work with. Okay, so now I've got those two pieces. So real quick, while I've got these together here, I'm going to take a hole punch. And I'm going to hold these two pieces together so that way I can go ahead and punch a hole in here. And that's how I'm going to go ahead and tie it closed. All right, so that way those two line up easy enough. And then I've got a piece of our Cosette paper. And this measures, it is, let's see, I want to say it's a one and a quarter inch wide by, what was that, three and a half? Maybe, let's see. It is three, three inches. All right, I didn't write down all my measurements ahead of time. So. Thing. I've got my verse mat here with my grid that I can check. So to tie it all in again, I am going to go ahead and take that toffee and my sponge and go ahead and ink up the edges. And I'm using a sponge just because it kind of gives that soft effect. You could direct to paper and then it's just going to be a darker, more intense color there on the edge. But I kind of wanted to go for the soft because I feel like that's more in line with the vintage feel. All right, so then I'm just going to go ahead and adhere this on to my front here that I've already sponged. So it should line up edge to edge there. And then what I did is I took a two inch circle. This is our desert rose, which I also feel, here I have the ink pad to show you. I feel like it has a nice kind of vintage feel to it. I use the light side. Our cardstock has two tones to it. This darker side is the true color of desert rose. You can see here against the ink pad, but I used the lighter one just so it was a little softer. But I did go ahead and ink up um, with that stamp set that this die comes with in the Desert Rose and just did a single flower here. And I'm going to, again, take the toffee ink, oops, just so I'm staying consistent. And I'm going to just go ahead and ink up the edges. Real quick here. Again, totally optional. And then I'm going to take some 3D foam to raise up the circle. Take two pieces on there. And then I'll remove the backing. I'm gonna kind of center that over that pattern paper. And you'll notice on my sample, I did do first and second generation inking of the flower just to kind of get some subtle um, flowers in the back, but I kind of felt like that was too much. And so for all the kits, I just did the single first generation stamp just so that really has a nice focus to it and it's not too overwhelming. And then I used a 16 inch piece of twine and I'm just going to go ahead and cut this in half so that I've got a little bit more thickness to it since it's kind of a thinner twine. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this through the hole. Try to do both strands at the same time. So that way then I can go ahead and pull them together and you'll just go ahead and create your bow and then trim the ends as you need to so that the ends aren't frayed. Although with twine, it doesn't really matter so much. Okay, that's not the best bow, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's all there is. Super simple, um, fun idea. I just thought that Using this die to create the tote, a 3D item was just so fun. And I wanted you guys to be able to see that in action. And because um, when you can get something else out of a product, which isn't the actual intention, it's always so fun. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, stay crafty.